Welcome back to another episode of Star Made Official Weekly News. I'm going to try and make this weekly again for you guys. Uh, we've got plenty of updates to get through. I'm going to be doing a bit of a sort of December, January roundup um, due to the uh, patches keep coming thick and fast on the dev side of things now. We're starting to see some movement there. So without further ado, let's skip back in time to last year and we'll do a big catch up, shall we? So. Um, of course this is the new news and uh, we've been working on this set part of the news ship 3 still not 100% finished but you know this is it so let's get on with it uh, first of all going back to January the 13th I think is the earliest one is that the earliest one we're going to be looking at let me just double check that dink no there we go that's more like it so yeah we're going back to the 6th of December and I may have already covered this part of the news but we're going to do it again anyway so Let's go full screen and go through these. So back on the uh, 6th of December, we had talks of these new images coming through. So we're just going to take a look at those in uh, detail. These are the new ship shapes, uh, new block shapes. So we've got the tetrahedron and the pentahedron, I think it is. Um, obviously one of them is a little, little triangle, you can obviously see that, and then the other one is an inverted one. So these are inverted, put together. Pretty cool. Um, I've already had a little play with them, and they are excellent. It's going to be be meaning some new ship, new new shapes, new planar surfaces that we're going to be able to use, which is uh, going to add a lot more detail to things. And then, of course, finally, we've got the orientation of terrain. Okay, uh, the orientation of these blocks here is going to be uh, big. That's going to be a big change. So. Um, you know, personally, I can't wait to sort of make stations which have got terrain parts, you know, like grass. So you've got, you've got that imagination of rotating gravity, you know, with the ship rotates, you've got gravity. So um, it's going to be cool. And also, gravity has been done up as well, which means that you will actually be able to stand on the block with the terrain item pointing in the right direction. So I'm all for this. Can't wait to see it happen. Um, moving on to the next point, let's see now. I'm just going to talk about this. So a tetrahedron-like shape is composed of triangles and a five-sided cube that is missing that tetrahedron. So, you know, I'll be able to show you some more of these, but once you've been playing with them, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Of course, if you want to check these out now, they're in the dev build right now. So you can go and download that, go to any shop, and you'll find them in the list. Uh, and then just play, play around. Also, uh, the new format of orientation has 32 types, which uh, which means he's added the missing corners, which we've just been talking about. Um, the actual extra shapes don't take take any performance from the game, and each block only takes three bytes. Now, three bytes is on RAM is nothing, and, and 12 bytes on graphic card RAM is just nothing. You you couldn't write a text file that was. I don't think well you could probably could write like a one word text file and that would be about that. So anyway, let's move on. So we're gonna go up the list and we're just gonna go straight on to the next one. So here we are. I already covered this as well, but we're doing a roundup. So dynamic traversable oak tree. So major graphical uh, upgrades. So new effects. What we're looking at here is uh, 1,024 ships. Oh wait, 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 where is the picture of the 1,024 ships? There it is! So we've got 1,024 ships right here. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's a lot more than we're used to. Now, I've already been going over this in the, uh, I've already been going over this sort of to people in videos and things, and we have done a bit of testing, so, you know, um, if you want to go and check out my video, which is called How Many Ships? Question <laughs> mark. You, you'll be able to see the disgustingness of it. Um, I mean, <clears throat> we had them attacking each other, which I think was a little bit too much. Um, but there were a good thousand uh, ships down there attacking each other. So, yeah, it would be interesting to see how, um, how good this is once it comes out. But I myself can't wait. I've already seen it, and it looks beautiful. So, all power to Schema for beefing up our uh, physics engine again excellent stuff so moving back to the actual news blog <clears throat> let's give you some data so these 1024 ships that we we're just looking at and with all with physics and everything we're only taking 300 megabytes of ram 
which is insane because most people have a minimum of four to eight gigabytes of RAM these days, uh, with some people going all the way up to 32 now. So, you know, if you're sat there with, with a 32-bit operating system thinking to yourself that three and a half is going to be enough, might be a good idea to get a 64-bit operating system installed. Um, but then there you go. Anyway, so uh, faster physics, loading, lighting, computation, sorting, and all that with less memory consumption. Um, there is some technical stuff here, and if you want to go back and read that blog, I will be putting links in the description to all of these news, and obviously they are at star made org slash news if you want to just backtrack and sit here for 10 minutes and give it a read shadows i needed some distraction from pure numbers and indices says schema which you can totally understand um, he's managed to make a shadow system in a day and then he completed it with not optimized yet in another day which i think is an amazing achievement i mean if you take a look at this simple needle ship um, with the sun casting a shadow, a shadow underneath the planet. Looks beautiful. And then just look at that planet. It's going to make your screenshots absolutely beautiful, guys. I, I, I just can't imagine, you know, when you, when you think about how the game looks already, I think it looks brilliant. But when you add shadows into the mix, very, very beautiful. It's going to be some eye candy screenshots going around. I've already seen a few members of our community. Um, one of them, Auriga City on YouTube. He's already brought out a video of his solar sailor using a few angles, uh, carefully selected angles uh, in, the, in the dev build. And it looks absolutely stunning. So there is that, and let's move on. <clears throat> so then, if we get back to the news post. So, um, the other feature is also going great. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, we're going to move up. Uh, there was a release about the uh, Lightning Sphere. Um, Yelby and Co. Um, can't can't forget to mention Muzzled Elk. Basically, both of those guys, they're amazing. They were running this PvP tournament, very similar to the uh, Thunderdome. Obviously, it's called the Lightning Sphere. The concept is very similar, and uh, the rules are very, very similar. So. You build your ship, you fight it out in a giant sphere, two, uh, 1v1, but I think they do do more than just 1v1, so I went down there once and they had a, a some kind of crazy battle royale going on. Um, but anyway, so there was an event over Christmas, so this was pushed out in the launcher, which is great, because it's always nice to see little communities getting a bit of a promotion in the uh, Star Made News in the launcher. So then, moving on. So now we're getting into the sort of um, the meat of the news. So, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about these weapons first. Now, if you notice these weapons here, they are, that is the new weapon system. So you've got cannon, missile, pulse, sorry, cannon, missile, beam, pulsar, and mine layer. All right, but you'll be able to combine them as a master slave, as shown in this little graph here. Now. If I have a cannon and I connect it to another cannon, it will become a rapid cannon. If I get a missile and I connect it to a beam, they'll be tracking long missiles. That's all the information I have right now. So tracking mode, long missiles. That's, that's the only thing I, I, you know, we've only got what is here to go on. It's pretty clear, but of course it doesn't give us all the information. So there's still a bit of speculation at the moment, but we've got enough to go on here to sort of guess. Now, what I, what, I would, what I would imagine is that we'll be connecting computers using the C and V buttons that we're currently using to connect computers with uh, cannon blocks, for example. The actual uh, AMC blocks for a weapons computer, the D1000 blocks for the D1000 computer, etc. Of course, the missile block is going to be out. There's three types of missile block right now. There's only going to be one, so that means I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've heard that you will have to remove your missile blocks. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, it could be the case that they all just turn into this new missile block, but I'm going to assume I've got to remove all my missile blocks. The beam laser is going to be instant travel laser. So that means it's going to be, I'm assuming, again, there's a lot of assumption here, and I'm very sorry for the speculation, but that's what we have. So. Instant travel laser sounds to me like a hit scan weapon. Um, so, for example, it'll draw a beam instantly and then draw another beam instantly. 
as per its reload uh, speed and whatever else statistics. Well, not speed because it's instant travel, but you know what I mean. So when I say hit scan, that means that as soon as you click on something, it hits it. There's no travel time for projectile, like it says in just instant travel, and it will draw a laser. I'm assuming it will look a little bit like what we already have for salvage lasers, only this will do damage. Okay? That's my guess. I can't wait because I'm a massive beam laser fan. I'm an Amar pilot in EVE Online, and I do love fitting all the lasers. So yes, that would be nice. Uh, the pulsar has been changed into something which I would akin to a smart bomb. So it's not going to have a push effect, it's just an area of effect burst. So great for you know haulers as a defense against little ships that might try to take you out. Because um, you can just pulse and hit them. And if they get too close they will get destroyed, which is very nice. Um, and taking away the push, although it does break all my pulse engine races, that's fine, he said there's another system coming in to replace that, so I'm not uh, I'm not jumping or panicking. Plenty of room further down the line to rebuild that. The mine layer, I have on authority that you will be dropping an entity much like an explosive core. Okay, so you'll be actually dropping off a little core, which will then explode when someone hits it. And obviously the properties of that explosion are determined by the different types of mine layer. There is a limit for how many mines you can have in a sector, but of course that's just for, you know, you don't want like a thousand mines being dropped in a sector and there being no limit, so that's more for stability reasons than anything else. Obviously, combining these, we've got just looking through, we've got a Tsar bomber on the mine layer, we've got a neutron pulsar under pulsar, we've got heavy siege and charge lasers, we've got sleeper missiles, we've got sniper cannons, flat cap. There's a lot in here. And someone else pointed out in a discussion re recently, but well, obviously, for more speculation on the news. Thanks, guys. I know. Um, if someone was to add another weapon in, for example, say there was a sixth weapon added to this sheet, then it would be six to the six, you know? So you wouldn't just get, you know, by adding one weapon, you actually get a combination of all new, you know? So it goes up, <clears throat> you get another six weapons. So yeah, uh, I can't wait to see how this goes. But anyway, you've spent enough time on the uh, weapons, so I think we are gonna move on. So moving on, we're gonna head up the page there is a new website on the horizon, okay? We've heard about it, and it's nearly done. No patch yet, we all know about that, but with the looking of the dev, with the way the dev build's currently looking, I, I would imagine it won't be too long. Uh, something to look forward to, big weapon system, won't be in the next patch, will not break your existing weapon systems, except missiles, major balancing changes will occur, so be ready to experiment with that. So, I mean, if you've been away from the game for a couple of weeks um, or maybe months, I'd say that when this comes, you're going to be flooding back here, if just if only, just to mess about with it, you know? So, um, that's going to be cool. So, uh, we're going to go up the page again. So, hope everyone had a good holiday. Yeah, these are out, these are out. All right, there we go. Uh, we did have an actual update this month, which allowed us to do basic changes. Um, like for example it fixed the way that uh, tur turrets couldn't actually move with the player inside so that was done um, and yeah like I say um, the biggest change which is going to be actually useful for everybody is this new change to the docking laser uh, but we'll get to that we'll get to that so we're going to head up to the next page because I think we've pretty much covered all the news here again if you think you've missed anything on this page you just go star mateorg slash news and it'll get you straight there Right, so, news flash, 13th of January. This is where that patch came. Uh, this was a hot fix, and I didn't actually do this hot fix because there was a release that rolled it up a few days later, I think. So, uh, gravity blocks can be oriented. Uh, this is a pre-release. So, that was like for, say, uh, the gravity elevators. So, you can, uh, you know, use gravity to go up and down, which is cool. Uh, there is a helmet, although no one seems to be able to take it off or put it on. I don't know if this is because it hasn't been implemented or if just nobody's figured out the button. So it uh, might be a good idea to find that out. Shadows have been improved and we're going to move on to the next build here. 
So then, the dev build. We're talking about dev builds now, guys. Schema has added a solution for the AI difficulty in the game. So there's now a difficulty setting and you can enjoy easy to mean levels of AI viciousness. A new orbital viewing camera has been added. Simply hold down the backslash key to display it based on the location of your astronaut. GIFs can now be recorded by toggling your pause and break key. The GIF is placed in your StarMade folder, same as your screenshots. A set of settings for GIF recordings have been added to your settings. For now, the settings file is in your StarMade folder. So, as you can see here, what we've got here is um, a generated GIF based on the world that this guy was in when he took the pick when he did the rotation. I'm guessing he hit rotate and then recorded the GIF. So yeah, we've got built-in GIF recording now. I'm hoping that people will start sharing those. And I just want to remind people, if you upload a GIF to Google+, Plus, Photos, or on the community, it will animate. So, or it did last time I did. So uh, please, please give that a try and let me know if you have problems, because uh, that'd be a really cool thing to start a new uh, StarMade animations folder for that. Right then, so moving up. Quick fix. So we've done a um, uh, we've done a large like a little update, which rolled up the hot fix and a few other things, a few other fixes from that previous patch down here on the 13th of Jan. And so we all did that update. And here we are, Dave and his crew. There's a new asteroid here, and his name is Dave. Where's Dave? There's Dave. You can just about see Dave. I think just about he's <laughs> kind of up there somewhere um, and yeah he's an animated 3d model and skin created by Keaton Purcell aka Omnimotus or Omnimotus uh, Dave is your default skin in the world of StarMade but he may be replaced with other skins including custom helmet skins he also has a beautiful new world of textures to explore thanks to Tom Berridge, aka Kupu, the creator of StarMade's official new texture packs. That is the cartoonish and realistic texture packs, which I'll be doing reviews on very soon. Uh, Dave isn't alone in his lustrous iteration of StarMade. He has a crew, and you can now hire crew members, NPCs from stations. Um, I actually did a re oh, I've done that as well in episode 571. Um, although you're limited to five active NPCs you can give commands to at once, you have more in reserve aboard your ship. This is still an early stage and there's plenty left to add. So if, I mean, I'm seeing roleplay game aspects here because I think you can write your own conversations. So you, well anyway, we'll get to that. <laughs> Effectively you can write a quest, put NPCs in place, give them directions for pilots to follow to get to somewhere, you know, somewhere. This is, this is really, really interesting and adding some depth to this game, because at the moment, it is literally Minecraft creative mode network play in space, and it's getting so much better. Now we're just getting layers upon layers upon layers added into the game. So, here we are. In addition to the crew, oh, they die, and there's no way to respawn them. They cost 50,000 credits to buy as well, if you're interested. You can just go to a shop and buy one and then you use the uh, slash creature underscore go to to tell him to get on your ship unless of course they're going to add the new ai panel to better control your i would assume that there's going to be a better way of doing it not with commands um the fabricated tool seriously who even uses picks anymore exactly um so i'm guessing that's going to be our equivalent of the uh matter manipulator um, I think this has actually been in the works for longer though. I remember seeing an image of the Fabricator tool last August. Maybe even, yeah, definitely late August. I think I saw a picture of this or found the image in the texture files. Anyway, the docking beam fix. Cockpits can now function as the dock beam origin block. So if you've built your core at the back of the ship, just whack a docking uh, beam, uh, sorry, whack a co cockpit at the front and switch into that. And when you press zero and click, you'll be able to dock with a laser coming from there, which is going to make docking giant ships so much easier. I, I have been videoing people trying to dock huge ships and they have some real fun dancing around with their <laughs> collision checks. So that's going to be great. That's going to make everything. That's perfect, that is, because then you've got no excuse not to dock your ship. It's perfect. 
Uh, of course, if you can't find a cockpit. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> Signature fetching, another optimization. The client will ask for whole regions and server will send back a bitmap um, of what segments are 100% empty, so the client then only requests non-empty segments to load, which is quite interesting. So that should hopefully speed things up a little bit more for everybody. Two. So then, just so you know, not currently in game. This content is in the upcoming patch and is not part of the download in the launcher, okay? Um, I will show people where they can get the dev build from. It's very simple. You just click on download. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that as soon as we finish this here, okay? Right then, we got the last piece. This is the last piece of, of news for this week. So thanks everybody for watching so far. You guys are dedicated and I salute you. Uh, so I'm going to read this out as pretty much as accurately as I can, okay? So Dave can do many things and apparently one of them is understanding Lua. Schema has been teaching our intrepid astronaut and his crew to follow Lua commands. He has also been hard at work bug fixings, tweaking, preparing, optimizing and generally improving the game. Here is a short list of some of the recent activity in the dev patch. Star Star this list is for the dev patch and is not yet in the public version, Star Star. Underline. Yeah. So, um, just so I, so you're completely clear, this is not in the game yet. This is in the dev release. And I will show you how to get that dev release first because I know you're all itching. Manually. So we click download and then we click manually. And then we are hit with a giant white screen and you select dev. You put in the password which is dev and dev until of course schema changes it. And then down we go. And then you can see today is the 27th of Jan and look we've got a new release on the 27th of Jan at 5.20 in the morning. Come on, look at the dedication guys. He does not live in America, all right? Look at the dedication, midnight. Four o'clock in the afternoon, five thirty in the morning. This guy works hard for us. So I just want people to make, you know, that's something important. I think dedication, right? That's putting the work in, right? Now, anyway, enough of that. So there it is, and you click on it, you download it. Now, once you've downloaded it, create a new folder, okay? Create a new folder, and. Put the launcher that you already have, just copy it from wherever you've got it already, put it in that folder, make a new folder in, also next to your new launcher that you've just copied in there. Name the folder StarMade with a capital S and a capital M. And then you drop this zip file that you're downloading straight in to the StarMade folder. Unzip the folder so all the contents are out of the archive and then go back and open the launcher that you just copied. Okay, and what it'll do is the launcher will see that StarMade folder and it will see all the data inside there and it won't try to update. It'll find the StarMade and it will just use that. And then you'll be running the dev build. Okay, it is really that simple. So just quickly again, put, put the StarMade build in a folder called StarMade, with a capital S and a capital M, unzip the whole archive, and then copy a launcher next to that StarMade folder that you have created and unzipped the contents of the archive into. Run the launcher and you're good to go. So then, now you know how to get it and how to install it, let's go through all the stuff that's been done. Docking beam origin is now currently used cockpit. Fixed six-sided gravity from orientable gravity blocks. Implemented the fabricator to harvest blocks instead of being able to remove at once. Added scaling to bone implementation. This is related to attaching things to Dave model, like the new fabricator. Added rest of the new blocks to the config. All the, day, all the, all the remaining tetrahull shapes in various colors and orientations. Fixed bug that would cause brightness on blocks when a ship is exited using shadows. Integrated LUAJ libraries for full LUA support. Implemented Lua interface. Implemented new conversation system. Implemented system to create conversations with Lua. Implemented networked conversation. Fixed block modding tool not to crash when reflection reports non-accessible field. 
improved shadows to not shine through faraway objects when close up to something else that should normally be shadowed from that faraway object. Fixed some shader issues for map graphics card drivers. Added failsafe for path calculation to stop after a threshold is reached. Implemented normal maps. Yay, normal maps! This refers to textures, not world maps. So if you're a texture map create, creator or artist, you can create normal maps now for the texture pack, which is going to be great. I can see people taking advantage of that. I'm not a pro texture pack creator, but we have a few, and it'll be interesting to see what they come up with with that new addition. Uh, fixed source of bugs. On unloading entities, uh, on unloading, entities were triggered to save twice, once for the sector unload and once for the unload of the object itself. This was a source of various random bugs, like objects completely vanishing. Fixed characters controlled by players falling off moving objects when in gravity. Ever been riding a surfboard in gravity or sitting on someone's ship and they cross a sector? You'll probably be familiar with the fact that you fall out slash get teleported a thousand meters. So, or in sector change. So, fixed characters controlled by falling off moving objects or in sector change. So it'd be interesting to see. I'm gonna be testing that because that's like something I use a lot. Implemented the new skin files. Implemented transmission for the new skin files. Because you would have noticed that that wasn't a possibility in the dev build up until this point. Uh, everyone would have the skin that you had. <laughs> Removed lag from flying through open doors. Uh, further improved physics performance with advanced lookup tables. The removed unnecessary non-scaling transformation from physics cube clue collision process. I'm hoping that means less collision checks, which of course is going to make it better, but it's difficult because I don't know what the difference between non-scaling transformation and scaling transformation is. I'm not a developer. I got a rough idea, but anyway, moving on. Uh, improved performance of single block updates by a lot. Building, salvaging, and opening doors. Reduced lag from loads of missiles in one place by a lot. Improved A-star pathfinding to avoid turning if possible means they're not going to be doing zigzags, which is nice because they were zigzagging a bit when they hit the edges of, a, of, a, of an area. But nah, that's nice. Basic, uh, implemented basic NPC path smoothing. Um, implemented settings of, it's implemented settings sliders. So it'll be interesting to see exactly where those are going to be used. I'm guessing on the more and less perhaps or something like that. We'll see. Uh, or in the options maybe. Integrated sliders for advanced build, build mode. We all know what that means. Advanced build mode size now saved by ship entered. So no coming out of a ship and getting straight back into it and having to immediately reset your build mode options. It's nice. Very convenient. And advanced sliders for weapon settings. A lot of people have been asking for that for a long time because it can be quite tedious when you have a hundred groups to uh, change all of them to be the same, <laughs> if you wanted to do that. It, no, no one ever did because of that fact. So this will be very interesting to see how that goes. Right, um, that's pretty much all the news I have to show to you from the, de from the launcher. So I just want to thank you for sticking with it for that long. Um, it was a very long news release this, this week, uh, but then it was like nearly two months of catch up. Um, I did keep releasing news, but uh, I wanted to roll it all up and then go back to the regular, you know, the more. So the only other thing to mention is we have a new section now uh, for sports, all Star Made Sports. So I'm just gonna give you a brief preview of the desk. So yeah, this is the sports desk, and I'm hoping to do Star Made Racing in space, like Zero G, uh, sports such as Zero G Jousting, and we've also got the other sports, we've got batting practice and shot put now, uh, we've also got the uh, skill game with the Ring of Fire, what else have we got? We've also got all the skid racing planets, I think there's about three or four courses of that now, there's also Ender's Game. What else have I seen? Oh, and also there is the Pulse game, Blitzball. We're going to get a Blitzball arena built. Um, and then also, not forgetting, of course, the Lightning Sphere, who pretty much are the premier Star Made sport going down. So, you know, you go liking after the uh, Thunderdome. So I'm going to have, hopefully, going to invite some people down from those events to sit. You can see there is a spot there on the right and I'm hoping that they'll be interested in getting involved. So yeah, that's pretty much it. 
And I just wanted to sort of make you aware that, yeah, we've got the desk and we want to do releases and updates on those games. And maybe show a bit of video to people so that they know what they're, what it's, what it's all about. Um, and we're going to do all mini games and Star Made Esports, which anyone has come up with. So, please get in touch, mushroomfleet at gmail.com. And uh, get in touch, we'll try and arrange an interview for you. And uh, you don't actually have to be here when we're recording the news. We can take your skin and film it with an actor and uh, stick your voice over the top. So that's no problem at all. So, uh, just thanks again for everybody watching. Um, thanks again for everybody watching. You are all awesome uh, for coming and checking out the news. We're going to have some more for you as soon as it comes. So thanks again for watching this super long release and in future of course there will be fewer and shorter releases uh, more often. So thanks again guys, I'll see you next time.